Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home. friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm your host Paul Jasson. Thank you for joining us and as we begin taping today it's a beautiful day downtown uh, here at Lancaster. We of course tape at the Fairfield Federal Office downtown Lancaster right on the square. The gazebo is behind us and of course almost on top of us is the Lancaster Festival and that will be our first segment today. We'll talk a little bit about that. There are so many facets to that. I want to mention too that uh, coming up just in a couple of weeks, we'll have a big, our annual Columbus Zoo program, uh, probably the most fun show we do all year. We'll have uh, good folks down from the Columbus Zoo, and they'll bring half a dozen animals or so, and we'll have them right here. And it's always great fun to talk with those folks. They, they're so knowledgeable on the animals at the Columbus Zoo, so we'll have our annual uh, Columbus Zoo program here. And, of course, I want to remind you, speaking of the Lancaster Festival, that during the Lancaster Festival, uh, on the Friday, that the first Friday of the Lancaster Festival, and then the entire next week we'll be broadcasting live downtown around noon, uh, broadcasting uh, right on the square by the uh, fountain down there, and we'll have programs each day uh, highlighting all events of, uh, and clips and just everything will be all festival stuff, so that'll be coming up. We'll be telling you more about that. Uh, I want to thank the good folks at Fairfield Federal for having us in today, and we'll bring on our first guest, Colin Hedico. Colin, how are you? I'm wonderful. Good. Thanks for having me. Maybe the first time I've had you on. I think Amanda has hogged all the time she, whenever I have destination has. downtown. <laughs> uh, Colin is the event and planning coordinator uh, for all the big stuff that's going on with destination downtown. And of course, there's a, that's one of the real busiest places around all year, but certainly as we head into the festival. But uh, And I guess that's really the, our focus here uh, coming up here this weekend. Uh, Gosh, it's here already. It seems we've talked about it so long, you get so amped up about it, and now it's finally here, and I'm sure this has been your focus for a while. For a while, for months. This is yeah. downtown's biggest night, yeah. you know, with yeah. thousands of people. Really showcase the, what you got. Yeah, at the Art Walk this Friday night. Um, I'm super excited about sure. it. It's, it's just amazing to see how many people come down to look at all the art throughout our downtown businesses and, and have a good time and celebrate this community. I've heard some people have a good time. I've heard they, they enjoy do. it. I've heard That's beyond it. the art, beyond right. the food, beyond the wine, beyond the whatever it is. Uh, you know, and it always amazes me. We've seen certainly rainy nights on Art Walk Night. We've seen incredibly hot nights. I mean, just brutally hot. But the crowd almost is unfazed by that. Yes. I mean, people love to come to this on Friday night. They absolutely do. And, and you're right, there is so much now. You know, a long time ago it started out as just kind of a gallery hop throughout the downtown businesses yeah, and, yeah. and now it's grown. It, we have that, but we also have um, beer gardens and live music and entertainment, family activities throughout downtown. So there's really a little bit for everyone. Uh, how many art exhibits do you know offhand how many there are so there are 32 wow. locations yes. with over 40 different artists wow um, and we have artists not only locally but from throughout the region which is really cool so so what's um, you you talk about this is probably from your standpoint the biggest day of the year for destination downtown in terms of showcasing what the downtown has to offer but uh, are you guys you guys have any any being in charge of any of this because I know it's Lancaster Festival, but it is downtown. So you guys, uh, do you have a calling here? The things you have to do that yes, day? Yes, we do. So really, we manage Art Walk for the festival, oh. um, and and so it's it's really great because all of these organizations, you know, even outside of the Lancaster Festival, when you look at the Lancaster Parks Department and Friday Night Bandstand and all these different parts, we all really work together on those. Um, but my job with the art walk is really to manage the artists. I, I figure out who comes in. Oh. Um, I oversee the art walk committee to decide um, what artists go to what location. Um, I work with graphic designers to make the maps, um, to 
and, and all the different marketing materials for the Art Walk. So Destination Downtown Lancaster has really kind of stepped in as the manager for the Art Walk night during the festival. So you say there are maybe 40 artists, 32 locations, 40 artists for the Friday night bandstand. And your job at one time was maybe to pare that down to that sure. 40 number got to be a tough job. I imagine you have many more applicants than just 40. We do. It's nice because we have a committee who kind of helps with that, of okay. artists who know more about art than I do, for sure. Um, and, and I assume that mo on top of, of picking the right 40, because that's what you're trying to do, trying to get the best 40 for the venues that we have, then trying to pair them with the best location, because I'm sure some artists Art like Eddie Kitchen. Eddie is right. a personal friend of mine. Yeah. I've known Ed since we were in high school, and he's always at the bank Standing over here. Stone, yeah. So he's always there. But there are some of these people probably coming in that are new. So you're thinking, where would they match up? Well, should they exactly. be in a bank? Should they? Because there's always like Fairfield Fetter always has the same people. The Standing Stone always has it. Everybody has. A lot of them have the same people. But there are always new venues coming in, going out, doing that. So I suppose part of your job and your committee's job is to say where would the pairing be best? Exactly. When our artists apply, they do have to share um, what their art looks like, the size, the dimensions, and all that stuff. So yeah, all how, that how thought big a goes thing? into If you're a painter, how many how many things will you have there? Right. Is that is that a big part of what that you're is. figuring out? Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of work that goes into it, but um, it's an exciting time. It's one of my favorite nights downtown. Uh, just. Can you enjoy it? I mean, do you have a moment to enjoy it, or, or are you just so under the gun that night? Well, you know, I feel like I'm so under the gun months before, but when the night comes, it just happens. The load and comes it, off. A it does, bit, yeah. and and people just start flooding downtown. So, um, just to see all all the people smiling and having a good time makes me happy, and it's very rewarding. You're a young fella. You've grown up in this community. You've probably seen the. Uh, the festival from its infancy stages, and you've seen it grow to what it is now today here in 2019. But, uh, you know, I can remember when the Art Walk started, and, and the, one of the big deals is, is, you know, at different times we used to have uh, Arnett Howard down here, and that was yeah. such a huge deal. But now things have evolved. He's not here, and I think, well, boy, it's really going to suffer. Different things take place. We've got several bands around. Don't That's we have right. several bands on Friday night? Yeah, there will be um, four different bands performing. Wow. So um, at the Beer Garden location. Now, is that the uh, empty lot there on Main, down past Square 7, right yeah, in there? Right yeah, right between Square 7 and the mid-off. Right. Um, these guys live will be performing. Um, and they're a big uh, hit around here. They play a lot throughout the central Ohio area. And then at the main square here, Zane Square stage, um, Whiskey Business will be playing, Yours for the Taking, and Zoo Trippin'. Okay. Um, Whiskey Business is kind of a, a slow, acoustic, good feeling music with popular songs, and they also have some originals. Um, Zoo Trippin. I'm really excited about that. They're they're a all original band, so they're like oh. true artists. All their music is, um, they they wrote themselves. Local. Uh, they're from Columbus. Okay. Yeah. So they're they're fairly local, sure. and and they're starting to make it big. They're on the radio, and nice. So it, it'll be exciting to see some of so that. So kind of the ground roots here of uh, watch maybe them and say, well, we had them here when right. they were just starting that's out. Right. That's always a, a fun thing to look back yeah. on. That's cool. So are you guys were you guys in charge of getting the bands too? Is that something um, you deal with? We we work really closely with Deb Connell at the Lancaster sure. Festival office. Yeah. Um, she knows different agents and stuff and can kind of help manage that. But and you, you talked about that a little bit too, the, the agencies that work together. Gosh, you've got the, the parks department here. They, they handle normally the bandstand thing down here on, on, the, on the Friday nights. But then you have the parks department and you got the destination downtown. You got the chamber. You got the uh, Lancaster Festival Committee with Deb Connell running all that over there. Uh, a lot of entities all come together, but it seems like uh, everybody seems to, to work well together because I mean, everything is always almost flawless from what we see that's exactly right I, it's it's so great to see the support that we have even with the city and closing the roads down and the safety aspect right. of art walking right. and having the law enforcement here it's just there are so many hands that go into putting on this great festival now what time does the art walk officially kick off on friday it officially kicks off at 6 p.m 6 p.m 
um, and the artwork will be on display till nine. Um, but people usually stay downtown until midnight or later, sure. enjoying themselves. And, and, and a real nice thing, and, and I don't know about all locations, you can probably tell me that, but say, for example, here for, for Federal, the art will remain here that's all right. week. So if you even if you couldn't make Friday night with everything that's going on, or maybe you can't make every place you want to go, you can come in the next Monday, let's say, walk into Fairfield Federal, and everything will still be here. Is that, is that the case in most locations? That is the case. So all businesses, um, they will be open during their normal business hours, and the Art Walk will be on display through the 28th. Nice. So. Nice. So that's a, that's a big commitment on the art people to keep everything there. Yeah. And yeah. Very good. But usually the artists are there on Friday night. That's always a neat thing, too. Is sure. that something you have to have, too? You have to have people there? Yes. Yeah, so the artists are, are there on Friday. The one thing is you won't be, um, you, you will miss interacting with the artists if you sure. come in after sure. Friday night. But, but frankly, sometimes it's so busy, like when I go down to see Ed down at the, the bank, sometimes it's hard to even get to talk to him because so many people are lining up because so many people have his pictures or, yeah. or his artwork, everybody wants to do it. Talking with Colin Hedico and Colin's with the uh, Destination Downtown. Now, it's hard to believe that there is life after the Langster Festival for Destination Downtown. It is. So you hardly can take a breath and then what happens? That's right. So we continue our Saturday cinema series, which is right outside here yeah. of Fairfield Federal. Um, our, we have two coming up after the festival. So okay. on August 3rd, we have um, the first Harry Potter movie. Nice. And then the week after, on the 10th, we will be showing The Wizard of Oz, celebrating its 80th anniversary. Maybe my favorite movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. It is a great movie. So there, there is. You're right. We can't take a breath. No, and, and I, 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 I would guess, frankly, for almost every weekend, every every week throughout the year, it is hard for you to catch your breath because no sooner do you come down from the festival than then you got cinema. But then things continue downtown. The downtown is so vibrant and alive now that I, you know, every place is, is just busy all the time. It is. It's amazing to see. The revitalization that has happened down yeah. here, even in five years, you know. Yeah. yeah, well, I can remember just a few years ago when the Ale House, they seemed to be the first business that kind of came in and opened up here, and they were right, right right about now, right during the festival. And from that point on, the, the downtown has just continued to grow. It used to be, well, the big complaint was you couldn't find any place to eat downtown. Well, now you've, you've got, got lots, lots of, of places lots to of eat, choices. and all of them doing well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. You know, so I, and there's hardly a storefront. I, I I remember hearing you guys talk about not many storefronts open downtown anymore, which is a good right. thing. Which is a good exactly. thing. Exactly. The mid off is full now. Well, I was going to talk about that. We only have about a minute left. Okay. The mid off. This will be the first one for it officially right. kicking off. Uh, Brad's done a fabulous job. You go by that place from the outside. It is so great looking. It, uh, is, it is so neat. And, and 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 there'll probably be something special going on there on yeah. the art walk. Well, there's exciting news. Uh, Windows is coming to the mid off. I, I'm not sure if people have heard about that. That is big I news. I think they're going to be there Ooh, interacting with nice. folks. Um, the mid off will be open, oh. and um, just a great time to go oh, check yeah. it out during yeah. the art walk. Well, Destination Downtown and uh, Colin Hedico here with us today. Colin, thank you for joining us. Thank uh, you so much. An exciting time to be, to be part of what you do. and. Uh, Take a breath. You may need to get some sleep here in the next couple of days because you're probably not going to sleep much on Art Walk That's night. Right. You'll, you'll probably be up out among the folks here having oh, a yeah. great time. Very good. Yeah, exactly. Colin Hedico with uh, Destination Downtown. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more on Fairfield today in just a moment. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster or 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Fairfield Today. I want to thank Colin Hedico for stopping by. Uh, we've talked about it for so long, and uh, again, the hype is finally here. It's Langster Festival time right around the corner. We're looking forward to the art walk and then that entire week. And again, we'll be downtown each day during the week of the festival at noon with, uh, with a live broadcast right here uh, where you're watching this today. So we're glad you're with us. We thank the folks here at Fairfield Federal. 
uh, for, for being great sponsors and we'll be talking to those folks throughout the week down there also. We'll have a, just a, a big week of guests on and, and everybody live on our, on our festival show. Uh, pleasure to have back with me. I don't think I've had Ivan Smith on for Young Life. Lancaster, I don't believe. I don't believe That's you've correct. ever been on. Ivan Smith is our guest. I've had you on to speak many times for the yes. Lancaster Corral. Right. And right. I think when we when I spoke maybe twice about Young Life, it was Kelsey Bowl. Kelsey Bowl. Kelsey Bowl, who is still there, she is unable still there. to be there today. Correct. So you're her able assistant. Well, I'm a s understudy and stand in. <laughs> How's that? Uh, She's my, our area director. Area director, yeah. but I've got uh, a member of the Young Life Committee, Ivan Smith, with me. And Ivan represents Young Life, and it's a worldwide Orthodox Christian ministry. The vision of them is that every adolescent that's a high school or middle school kid will have the opportunity to meet Jesus Christ and follow him. Is that a fair assessment? That's absolutely correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's... Uh, now, I think it's important. I think when I've spoken to Kelsey, I want to make that distinction. Uh, although maybe Kelsey attends your church, and I don't know that. She does not. She does not. So that's a, that's a distinction worth mentioning. This is not associated with your church or a church. It is church associated, but not with a particular denomination. I like to say that we're interdenominational. Inter. Inter. You mentioned that word orthodox. That's a small o. It has nothing to do with the Orthodox right. Church. Right. Just talking about Orthodox Christianity. Uh, not affiliated with any church and not a church. Yeah. In fact, we encourage kids who become serious about following Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior or who are exploring that. Mm -hmm. We encourage them to get together with a group of like-minded Christians, i.e. a church, yes. for purposes of regular worship. Well, we don't care what church it is. That we're Just, not, it, it has to be a church. You want them to be We involved. want them to be a member of a church family, absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. so what, how did Young Life come about? Do you know much about the beginnings of it? Uh, Young Life started, I, I can't mention too many names, uh, many years ago uh, with some women who got together in a town in Texas, I believe, and began praying for the high school kids in that town. Uh, they then realized that the kids needed more than that. They needed prayer, they needed some Christian leadership, but they also needed some camaraderie, uh, some crazy, wild, wholesome, fun kid stuff. Hmm. Those and, words don't kind of almost fit together. Well, uh, they can. They can. And they do with you. They can, and they absolutely do. And club is an event whereby the kids get together weekly during the school year and have about 45 minutes of fun, goofy kid stuff, always followed by a serious 15-minute gospel message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Young Life events always feature the gospel and always feature a gospel message. Uh, Young Life has campaigners Bible study also on a weekly basis, and they get together uh, and uh, study the Bible. So, uh, so how often uh, do they have regular meetings? Does Kelsey, does Kelsey have a group or, or her group when they meet? Do they meet once a week, once a month? What's the, what's the tempo here? Well, I have to answer that in two ways, Paul. During the school year, everything I'll say is, is during the school year, okay. beginning uh, in late August, which is, by the way, next month. Coming quickly. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, probably the, the most significant and the most noticeable thing that Young Life and Young Life volunteer leaders do is their participation in extracurricular activities with the kids at the school. Okay. They get to know the kids. They make friends with the kids. They earn their trust. Uh, there's an expression... Uh, in, 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 in Young Life that says uh, Young Life doesn't care what you know or who you know it's what you know about Jesus Christ and what you know about dealing with kids uh, that's the important thing not so interested in your credentials other than that uh, volunteer leaders get together with kids throughout the week if a kid's got problems 
he feels free to, to, to explore that problem with a volunteer leader. The girls always have a woman volunteer leader. The guys always have a male volunteer leader. Uh, and they can become very close friends with them and, and get some advice from them. And from time to time, just hanging out, maybe shooting hoops uh, or going to a movie or something like that. Is this true, pretty true much? Friendships. Is this pretty much uh, identified with the school year? Then the actual, I mean, the actual structured part of it. Uh, that part is, but one of the most well-known Young Life events is Young Life Camp. Yes, and that, of course, occurs during the summertime billed by Young Life as the best week of their lives. They go to one of Young Life's really awesome properties somewhere here in the, in, in the case of Young Life Lancaster, here in the eastern United States. They have fun, they, they eat well, and they have club every night. Mm -hmm. And every night they have a serious gospel message. And following that, the young women go back to their housing with the, with the female volunteer leaders and the guys go to their housing with their volunteer leaders and they talk about what they heard, they discuss, they feel free to ask questions. And one of the things that I find most exciting is when they return from that week of camp, during which the volunteer leaders probably don't get a great deal of sleep, Kelsey and her husband Josh, who's also a volunteer leader, open their home every evening for a week for those kids to come back to their house to discuss things they have learned Good during, follow -up. during the camp, uh, to ask questions that they might have, uh, to, and, and to do to prayer for prayer and maybe some more Bible study, but just to, to sort of solidify what, what happened uh, during the during the camp, yeah, maybe, maybe in some cases with the with the young people, maybe there are more questions need to be asked than get answered. In in, in a few days there, they come back with their head kind of spinning. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and and you know, as Christians, we know there's nothing wrong with asking questions. Maybe maybe not asking questions is the is is the not the good thing. So so the age is what maybe thirteen to eighteen is that kind well, of the age group? The age. Is, is based on uh, the, the high school age okay. and, and the, there's two groups. Junior uh, high, let's say, or middle, there's a, middle there's school. There's a middle school, yeah, yeah. now middle school. Uh, that's a group called Wild Life, which is young life for middle school kids. Okay. And then there's high school. Kelsey and her volunteer leaders are involved with the high school kids. We're established primarily at Lancaster, Lancaster High School, but we have a vision of giving every kid in our area here in Fairfield County the opportunity to know Jesus Christ and to have a relationship with Jesus. That, that was going. That's where we're going to go with the next question. And so, obviously, it's based here in Lancaster, but it's not exclusively in Lancaster. It can be Fairfield County. It, yes, that's right. We have six high schools and six middle schools in our area, which encompasses most, but not all, of Fairfield County. Okay. And that's the ones mostly that the kids are involved with. Yeah. 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 So people can be involved in their own church youth group and well, still be absolutely. involved with Yasla. And I'm sure that perhaps is something you encourage. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I, I want to make that clear. We're not a church. We're not a substitute for church. We, we are really a, a partner with churches. And, and we say, okay, you need to find a church in which you're comfortable and, and you need to be members of that church because that's not us. That's Would not you us. say that's, that's kind of how the, the steps are? The young people, when they first come to you, perhaps are unchurched and, not, and are perhaps <laughs> led to become a member of a church? That's, that's one scenario. Uh, then there are certainly kids that come who are not connected with the church at all. And there is more than one example of a kid who got serious about Christianity through Young Life, who then led his parents to, to Christ. Sure, sure. Uh, but but off the, some, of, some of the kids uh, are already Christians when they come. They bring their friends, many of whom are not churched. Uh, in my residence right now, uh, I know two young kids that, are, that wait table at the where my wife and I live, and they're both Christians. 
they both know a little bit about Young Life, but they have never participated, and I'm encouraging those two kids to begin sure. to participate, because they're high school kids. So if someone wants more information, or whether it's a young person, maybe a parent who sees maybe their child, grandchild, could benefit from involvement with this, what would be the next step for them? Uh, I like that question because we're looking for people who want to volunteer to help us in many ways. Adults. Uh, adults. Okay. Adults to help us in many ways. Okay. Uh, they could give me a call, uh, and I stay very close to what's going on with Kelsey and, and her volunteer leaders, and believe me, I would, I would help them out. And, and what's the number them. then? 740-503-8888. Zero. And I, and I think there's also, I'm sure there's a social media presence, but I know if you just go on a search engine, Young Life Lancaster, it can be found. Uh, Kelsey Bull is on there, information on how to get involved that way. You can go on, on the internet to Young Life, because Young Life is a worldwide organization, or you can go on the internet to Young Life Lancaster, and that will take you directly to Young Life Lancaster. Ivan Smith with us, Young Life Lancaster, a group that uh, really tends to the spiritual needs of middle school and uh, high school age children. Missionaries. Uh, missionaries. They, they do the work out there, and uh, Ivan is involved in the committee on that. So, Ivan, thank you for joining us. Lots Pleasure. of good information. Give Pleasure. Kelsey our best, too. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Fairfield today. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home.